I've been playing Battletech almost as long as I've been alive, and it's my passion to bring the tabletop experience to as many people as possible. I want to have a great game with you! I'm Tuck Davian, and together with the members of the Tulsa Battletech League, we're out on the open road, looking for players with guts to join us once again and feel the DACA on Battlebound! Mechs are back on the menu, Battletech fans. We're out on the road one more time for another episode, traveling this time to Lebanon, Missouri, home to such visual treats as the historic Munger Moss Motel, owned and operated locally on storied Route 66 by the same family since the 1970s, where you can stay overnight at one of their themed rooms and cruise their gift shop before you leave. Restaurants such as Taylor's Dairy bring the savory treats, and then it's off to CCYDNE Hobbies just off of Elm Street, nestled inside the Chalet Village to cover their monthly Lance Commander tournament. CCYDNE is an eclectic store where you'll find all manner of gaming minutia, ranging from the vintage supplements of the golden age of gaming all the way up to the modern releases of today. After we checked out their retail space and their spacious downstairs gaming area, we sat down with owner and operator Jackie Sprout for an interview. Jackie, thank you so much for being here with us today. We greatly appreciate you letting us come to your house to, to play and to thank check you. out this tournament. And I gotta say, I've seen this tournament for a while. Like, mm -hmm. it's been cruising around the space lanes out on Facebook, and I've, I've always wanted to be a part of it. So, I'm particularly grateful to come down here and see how you run things, especially since I run stuff back home right. at the Tulsa Battletech League. Mm -hmm. Hey! And, mm -hmm. and so it'll be a real good experience to see what kind of rule set you guys work with versus right. how we do things. So thank you again. Not a problem. And, and speaking of that rule set that you guys have, it's real interesting. And both of us were kind of talking about it on the way up here. And we mm -hmm. just wanted to know, was the rule set that you guys came up with for this tournament done organically? Or was that cobbled together from the experience? A lot of experiences and also from the old uh, Mech Warrior system from back in the 80s and 90s. We actually looked at the old rules and what they used at the big tournament and use those to kind of frame what we needed and then we just sort of tweaked it here and there to make it easier. We wanted to have something that a new player could even come in and play in a tournament, which is why we don't allow changes to piloting gunnery roles, or why we want stock mechs and stuff. We're going to do more tournaments later. Um, we're hoping this year, it depends on what happens with COVID, but we want to have more tournaments so that we'll be able to do some more where we'll be introducing the clans, we'll be letting people build their own mechs and stuff. Nice. But this one is just basically, nobody up here played right. Battletech. And we needed something to get everybody into the game because I've played since the 80s, so I want people to play the game and I want to be able to get out my old figures. So that's why we did something classic, classic Battletech. Very nice, cool. So speaking of been playing CCE, mm -hmm. kind of one of the things I wanted to, to get from you is how did CCYDNE get started? I mean, it, it, for the folks back home that don't understand, it stands for cheap crap you don't need at a price. Bam! I love that. Yeah. <laughs> that is just the coolest name I've ever seen. So I got to hear that story. Okay, so back in back in the eighties is when I met my husband Jay. Um, he was a DM before Dungeons and Dragons, and my boyfriend at the time took me to go to a friend's house to play Dungeons and Dragons. That's how we met. Um, many years later I had gotten married and all kinds of stuff and Jay and I had stayed friends and he owned a game store in Cape Girardeau, Missouri, Santa Fe Military Hobbies. And he needed some help because he was getting into collectible toys and I'm a big Star Wars collector and I had a whole bunch of figures and knew the values and things like that. Sure. So he brought me in as a semi-partner at the time. And um, when things didn't go so well in the original relationship and I got divorced, then he was kind of like, hey, you know, we know each other. Right. And we're like, okay, so sure. And we were still playing Battletech. We were still playing D&D. We were still playing 40K. We were doing all of that together. So we were like, oh, okay, yeah, let's, let's just get together. So after his store closed, we both went and did a whole bunch of other jobs, lots of other jobs. I used to work for FEMA, I was a newspaper editor, I've done all kinds of stuff. And when I left 
with FEMA, um, I was sitting around going, I'm bored and I don't have anything to do. Right. And I was really tired of having to chase hurricanes all the time because I did Katrina and Rita and all the big ones. So I was like, no, I don't want to do this anymore. Uh, I need to do something else. And so I was like, wait, I, I can do a game store. We don't have one in town. And everybody was like, okay, fine. And CCYDNE actually came about when we closed the original game store, that game store was both gaming and military surplus, military history, because oh, we, right. we did World War II reenacting. Right. And so I turned it into an online business, and that's what I called it was CCYD and E, because uh, there's an old uh, uh, George Carlin bit where he does a ad for a furniture store, and he goes, uh, come down and see our big line of cheap crap. You don't need a really high price. <laughs> and that. I said, I have to have this. I have to have this. So I used it. And, uh, and so for 10 years, we did military shows and reenactments and that kind of stuff, doing military surplus and stuff under that name. And I was like, I own cheap crap you don't need enterprises. Let's just make CCYD and e hobbies. It's easier for people to say. Sure. And open the store. And March, uh, not March, May 1st will be eight years that we've oh, been wow. open. Oh, All right. That's pretty safe. So eight years you've been open. Mm -hmm. How long have you been doing the Battle Tank tournament? Uh, the tournament's been, I believe, three years now. We were in the smaller space next door, um, and then we just outgrew that. We had to have more room, which is why we now have the basement where everybody can game. So we right. have plenty of room for everybody. And yeah, this place is sick, man. It's got the upstairs, and that's all just retail <laughs> stuff. And she's like, there's downstairs too. And you and I were just like, what? <laughs> oh, all right, yeah, that's pretty sick. Yeah, so me being the weeb that I am, like I've been to Japan <laughs> once and like half the stores are like this, like they have mm -hmm. the little upstairs and then the downstairs where all the cool stuff happens. Yeah. We're like, all right, yeah. Yeah. This Honestly, nice. it reminds me of the old gaming stores like of my youth that I used to go to in like the 90s and stuff mm -hmm. like that where, you know, you walk in and you've got the crew that like runs the joint and then you've got the separate spot for gaming mm -hmm. as opposed to just, you know, in the commons like they do back home. Right. They used to have a place called Game Town. They used to have a big old garage you could go out. And it was like a legit garage and you could play in there. That's really cool. Pretty sick, so. And that's the feel that we want to have. I want people to come in feel comfortable, look around, find you stuff. That's why we have a lot of AD&D and a lot of old Battletech and a lot of old Warhammer 40K. We've got all the classic stuff. And that's what we want is that feel of, here's a place to play and here's a place to buy and all the players can be down in the basement having fun and being a little loud <laughs> and it's not gonna bother the people upstairs who are buying stuff. Right. We've been pushing Battletech and people are now really getting into it and they're hearing about it. They're watching videos just like, you know, your, your show and others. And it's really nice that the community of people who used to play back in the 80s are starting to bring in more people and while it's gearing more towards the alpha strike and towards the you know the non hex map versions and stuff that's fine but all the old people like us who right. i say old people <laughs> um we've got the hex maps we've got the the new play maps and, and stuff like that and so we can teach people really quick we, we tell everybody if you can roll two dice and add and subtract you can play battle tech oh, and it's not as expensive as 40k right. and it's not as expensive as some of the others and it's an easy way to get in, which is why now I've got players who are just, they, they can't get enough. They want to play. And that now, familiar, doesn't it? I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about and at all. I, and I now have, I, I have two ladies who just bought their beginner boxes. Oh, exactly. They want to get into yes. it too. They, we, we showed them how to do it one night and they were just like, oh my gosh, this is so easy. I can't believe we haven't seen this. And I was like, yeah, and they, because before they wanted to do miniatures, but if the, pro the cost was so prohibitive. Oh, sure. Since Catalyst has kept the cost nominal, it's easier to get everybody in and they're more happy to do it. And then I go out and I find out all the old minis and stuff like I showed you upstairs. We have some of the classic miniatures and stuff. And people are like, oh, I want more. And mm -hmm. that's Battletech. Right. You gotta have more. All right, well, fantastic. I'm looking forward to it. Good. So am I, it's gonna be a great day. It's gonna be fun. You. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. I think I'm gonna do all right. I mean, the tournament field's not very big. There's only a few players, apparently. They do seem to know what they're talking about based on conversations upstairs. As for me, we did the dry run on Tuesday. I think with my uh, blackjacks, I didn't play the right way, deployed wrong position, didn't use the jump build as best I can. We're gonna fix that. With the stalker, I think I'm gonna back him off a little bit more and use the range, which I did not do in the live stream. But I think overall it's going to be a good day. And hey, if I win, I win. If I don't, 
I met new people and had a good time. I think I'm gonna do pretty good. I think I'm gonna finish middle to top. So I'm pretty confident. I am planning to win. Got to. And now that we've heard from our tournament player, let's have a look at today's game by the numbers, sponsored in part by Fortress Miniatures and Games. The dice fell and the first round was underway. The battle was to take place on a smaller than average battlefield, and the opponent was at a heavy advantage with multiple auto cannons able to deal insane damage, coupled with precision ammunition that gave his shots even more of an advantage against fast moving targets. Blackjack started off on the cautious side, but his nerves got the best of him during his initial few turns, and this caused more than a few key opportunities for firing early on to be missed, as his opponent took defilade behind the large hill toward the center of the battlefield. The, the thing that, that I saw going into it was I think he got hit by nerves a little bit to start with. I think he was a little cautious, a little a little scared of his opponent. Maybe it was because of the experience and, and you know, whatever, the fact that there's cameras around, it's a tournament, I don't know, but that, that's just a gut feeling. I mean, I, heck, I, I could be wrong on that. The enemy moved on him with confidence, and it was not helpful that the dice gods were not favoring blackjacks, while his opponent's dice were far hotter. The opponent used his arctic fox seemingly as a feint, and blackjacks took the bait, dealing heavy damage to the smaller mech, but ultimately giving the opposing heavy and assault mechs more opportunities to land deadly blows with their powerful autocannons, shredding the barguest into ribbons, and despite the fact that it was still active, the barguest was now in deep trouble and at a heavy risk of destruction. The two commanders jockeyed for position, each looking to find the best possible firing position on his opponents, and unfortunately for Blackjacks, the opponent's guns were sounding far more than his own. Um, I 
I think what could have happened there is the blackjack could have stayed out of that damn water, which is kind of the similar thing I gave this my building on Tuesday, did it again today. These issues were made worse as the opponent cut down his blackjack over the course of several rounds of concentrated auto cannon and laser hate, making it the first casualty of the battle. As the battle reached a crescendo, each commander dug in their heels and prepared to go DACA, each looking to put as much damage on their opponent's machines as they could muster. But with Blackjacks being down one mech and his opponent controlling no less than seven massive autocannons, the writing was all but on the wall. A final show of defiance from Blackjack saw his stalker Javelin and Barguest pilots damming the torpedoes and plowing full steam ahead with all weapons. The question was, could it be enough? The answer was ultimately no, as the opponent blew his Barguest off the map under the guns of his forces thundering autocannons, and his Javelin could frustratingly not put the opposing Arctic Fox away. Okay. So, not my first, not my best first round, but we did a little bit. Almost took out two mechs, um, and we'll just go for the next round. That's what it is. Okay. So the first thing I noticed is uh, he didn't look at his opponent's sheets. Uh, I think that was a big mistake starting out. Uh, there was a lot of. Uh, surprises there when that Bandersnatch came out with those double AC-20s, man, and I, I really feel like if he had looked at the sheets and knew what he was facing, that he might not have let himself get uh, trapped uh, a couple of times that I, that I noticed. Um, there was a key turn there where I feel like the Javelin should have jumped behind the Annihilator and lit it up from behind. A uh, bunch of lasers and, and, you know, maybe just a couple of jabs there might have gotten lucky and gotten into the internal on one of the side torsos blowing the ammo that could have been a big win right there so those are just the things that i noticed uh i thought it was a pretty good game um mainly what i tried to do fighting against a new opponent that i didn't really know how they played or what they were going to do what i tried to do was stay more flexible and respond and use my movements to kind of draw their mechs out into places i wanted them to wind up because if you can control the mobility of the fight, you have a little better advantage. The shooting's less important sometimes than where you're getting your opponents mixed to go and hit locations you can get on them. But like I said, I think it was a pretty good game. Uh, the only thing that he did that I wouldn't have done was he used an edge at one point to have me reroll a hit location that was a potential critical. And I don't know if I would have used that because I don't think it would have been that bad had the critical gotten through. Otherwise, like I said, I think he played a good game. There's a couple unfortunate circumstances. Uh, mainly that AC-20 hitting and coring out the, the Bargast by chance. Because he had a lot of armor left. And he just happened to get double stacked on it. But other than that, like I said, it was a fun game. It was a fun opponent. He knew what he was doing, which was always nice. So...
Blackjack started out on another small battlefield, looking to take the lessons he had learned from his last battle and hopefully put them to good use. The initial firing started immediately, and with so little cover to be found, each commander was within spitting distance within a minute of beginning the engagement. Despite this, the dice gods continued to be unkind to Blackjacks, as the battle quickly turned into a meat grinder, with multiple enemy units converging on his bar guest. I think the train was more to my favor without having the water there and the less mountainous. Really scared of that AC-20 Ultra, which he didn't land, not one single hit. His dice rolls with that was atrocious. The Hunchback's devastating auto cannon added on to particle cannon fire from the Warhammer and laser fire from the Battlemaster. For his part, Blackjax could not connect with his auto cannon yet again, greatly adding to his frustrations. I can't buy a bucket with that AC. It's hit less than 5% of the freaking time. He was, however, able to answer the Hunchback with two particle cannons from his Stalker, but all else was for naught. With this utter shellacking from his opponent, Blackjax was at a severe disadvantage and simply could not stay in front of the initiative, no matter how hard he tried. I did, by chance, get a majority of the initiative rolls. Over the course of the next several minutes of fire, the battle continued to go badly for Blackjacks, unable to connect with key autocannon fire and frustratingly unable to finish his opponent's hunchback. I just don't think there was a whole heck of a lot that Chad could have done any better than what he did. Uh, I was watching the entire time, God, that AC-20, man, he just can't seem to catch a break with that thing. And I know how frustrating that's got to be when you're shooting that big gun and you're just trying to get anybody under it, even one shot, and you can't make it. His die rolls were just against him that game. I mean, in, 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 a, in a map like this where there's not a whole lot of defilade, there's not a whole lot of cover, there's not a whole lot of tactics to be had there. It's kind of just run to the middle and shoot. So it's, it's kind of hard to mess that up and I, I don't think Chad really did anything wrong there. Just kind of kind of frustrating to see the die rolls go the way they did. Despite this, Blackjax refused to back down with a steely resolve to take his mech warriors into hell if that's what was called for. He defiantly marched his forces straight up to the enemy, knocking on the door of the opposition and reasoning that if he were to go down, he would go down swinging and take as many of them with him as he could, provided Luck decided to smile on him for a change instead of continuing to scorn him as he thus far had been. Unfettered by this course of action, his opponent continued to bear down on blackjacks, maneuvering his way into advantageous rear-firing positions or simply deciding to respond with brute force as opposed to finesse. The truth was beginning to hit home. Blackjax was simply not able to give as good as he got, as his opponent continued to slam round after devastating round into his force, steadily depleting them toward the point of no return. Like a punch-drunk fighter, Blackjax was still on his feet and throwing wild haymakers, looking for the miracle shot that downed an opposing mech and increased his chances, however minuscule the opportunity may be. The war of attrition finally came to a head during the last round of fire as pilots dug in their heels and trained their crosshairs on their opponents. A great gnashing of teeth occurred, culminating with a successful death from above attack by the hunchback pilot landing on the javelin while the other pilots commanded by blackjacks simply could not put their opponents away. This left Blackjacks in the unenviable position of needing to score a commanding victory in his next round in order to maintain any hope of finding himself within the top standings. Well, better game, I think, than, the, than, than round one, but it's what it is. We almost got us a hunchback in the bag. We did a number on a Warhammer. It'll work. We'll see where the points land. On to round three. Very interesting battle was a very, very good, well-fought game. Uh, yeah, it was good, good. Big shout out to the guys in the Southwest Missouri Battletech League on Facebook. 
It's always a good game and a good time playing here in uh, Lebanon at the CCYNDE Hobby Store. Shockingly, Blackjacks chose the same battlefield he had previously fought on for the site of his final battle of the day. He found he enjoyed greatly the straightforward nature of the terrain, allowing for quick and fast firing and hopefully just as quick of a conclusion. Unsurprisingly, the battle soon turned into a meat grinder yet again. Blackjacks had better luck with his autocannon this time around, however, ripping away the similarly sized autocannon of his opponent's Argus and managed to stay in front of the initiative. His opponent charged into battle and made a beeline to get as close as possible to the mechs under Blackjacks' command. Things seemed to be finally turning for Blackjacks as the initiative favored him and allowed him to gain the coveted rear arc firing position on three out of four of his enemy's units. This turned disastrous, though, when a shot from the enemy Rakshasa pilot exploded the Barghest's ammunition bin in its left rear leg, sending it to the scrap heap for good. The enemy Argus pilot, eager to avenge the loss of his autocannon, wrecked the leg actuator of the Blackjack, leaving it limping away as it could barely offer a return report. Blackjacks was now looking at a scenario where the initial hope he'd had of turning things around at the end was slipping through his fingers after only a number of minutes into the engagement. The enemy Rakshasa pilot was out for blood, looking to blow the spindly javelin sky high, while the blade pilot made his way into the stalker's rear. It was with a grim understanding that Blackjacks now knew the tables had turned on him once again, and he resolved that this turn of unfortunate events could only be undone with split-second timing and decisive, uninhibited action. Fortune finally smiled on Blackjacks as his enemy in the Sunder toppled under a barrage from the Stalker, falling unconscious as his machine crashed into the dirt. Blackjacks now needed to capitalize to have any hope of clawing his way out of the hole he'd found himself in. Despite feeling as though he was in a Kobayashi Maru style no-win scenario, he knew the only way out was through and resolved right then and there to take the fight to its conclusion, whatever that conclusion may be. Thus began the Showcase Showdown. Staying in front of the initiative was key, and Blackjacks managed to hold on. This was a short-lived victory, however, as his Blackjack pilot was rendered unconscious by the fire of his enemy in the Rakshasa, while the enemy Argus critically damaged the Javelin's engine shielding. In a rage, the Stalker pilot threw his throttle forward in a Banzai charge, knocking out the enemy blade as the final turn of the tournament came to a conclusive, thunderous end.
whenever I start my game, it's a case of I'll either try and find uh, some um, cover first, or it's all in. Just rush like Steiner approach and just rush in. On this one, I was using the blade to try and go up the side and get behind people, which worked. And um, unfortunately, a blade did get cornered, which I'm perfectly happy with. I'm always, I ha I'm happy to win or lose in these games. It's all about having fun for me. And showing off my painted mechs, which is kind of important to me as well. <laughs> But um, yeah, it was a great game. It's fair, we both took damage, which is important to me for the, as far as having fun. Well, this was fun. This was a lot of fun. So for this one, I really feel like this was probably the single most interesting game out of the three that I saw get played. Uh, it definitely had the most interesting outcome. I really feel like Chad was starting to come into his own there toward the end. After a day of play, he started to figure out, okay, I can knock this guy off the board, or here's where I can move to get the strong positions in the rear. He still had a few lucky, unlucky guy rolls. I mean, you know, getting that leg blown up by the on the bar guest at the end, or the beginning there when he, the ammo got exploded. <laughs> just rolls like that. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? But uh, honestly, I, I felt like he did pretty all right this game. You know, this was like I say, the one of the most balanced fights that happened all day. So I, I enjoyed watching this one. So they don't know I'm filming this. Ha ha. Anyway, um, I've been behind the camera all day, guys. This has been really fun to watch. I loved watching Chad grow as a player. I loved meeting all the new people while we played. This was awesome. Uh, shut up, Tuck. Anyway, uh, Chad did great that third match. Oh, it was beautiful. Friggin' beautiful. I uh, just wanted to throw in and say, I love all of you. Play some more Battletech. Deuces. All right. Well, let's see here. Today was not the best of games, was not the worst of games, but at any rate, um, I thought the first game was a little rough, I was still getting my feet wet. Second game did a little bit better, was more evenly matched. Third game was probably my best game. I did get to knock somebody off the board in the charge, that was kind of fun. Lost the bar guest, or that damn bar guest. That damn bar guest. Three rounds, hits in the legs, cannot fire an auto can to save his life. It is what it is. But, 10 out of 10 would do it again, and I had a good time today. I'm definitely interested in more Battletech tournaments. Thanks, BattleBound, for having me. Peace out. All right, Battletech fans, that concludes this month's episode of BattleBound. Remember, folks, if you like what you've seen so far, hit that subscribe bell and turn on all notifications so you can find out exactly where BattleBound's going to turn up next. Now, folks, we've had a great time today. You're out here at CCY DNE's Lance Commander Tournament with our featured players. We're sure looking forward to seeing you next time out on the Space Lanes on BattleBound! <laughs>